Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Byron and I'm a traffic engineer based in California, USA. I've been getting a lot of questions about what it's like to be a traffic engineer. And a lot of these questions are coming from people who are our civil engineering students or are thinking about possibly making a jump into this kind of career path. So in this video, I thought it'd be helpful to explain some of the key things that I feel that would make traffic engineering a good fit for a career. A lot of what I'll talk about will be based off my own experiences and observations. With that said, let's get right into it. First of all, let's start at the beginning. The majority of traffic engineers start their career by pursuing a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. As an engineer, there is an expectation that you'll complete a minimum amount of schooling. So I'm gonna say this outright. If you don't like math or science, civil or traffic engineering will be very challenging for you. There are two reasons why. First, you'll need to pass a lot of college level math and science courses. For example, when I was a student, I had to take multiple classes of calculus and I also had to take differential equations and statistics. On the science end, I also had to take chemistry and multiple classes of physics too. It doesn't end there. Once you're done with those, actual engineering courses will also include a lot of math and science-based concepts. My point is, if math and science isn't really your thing, consider what you're really getting into. I'm not trying to say that you need to love every part of math and science or be really obsessed with it, but at a minimum, you do need to know that you're gonna be immersed in it for many years. The second thing is, to officially become an engineer, there are licensing requirements that you'll need to get through. Here in the United States, we have the Fundamentals of Engineering exam, or the FE exam. And the purpose of the exam is that you need to demonstrate that you know enough math, science, and other concepts that civil engineering graduates are expected to know. A lot of students take this exam when they're still in college, but it's also not uncommon for people to take this exam soon after they graduate. A good amount of studying will be required, especially if you tend to forget what you've learned in class. So you pass the FE exam, but passing this exam does not make you a licensed engineer. It'll put you one step closer to being one. So what's the next step? Eventually, you have the option to take the professional engineer's exam or the PE exam. The PE exam is focused more on a broad variety of civil engineering subjects. This is the exam that you'll need to pass in the U.S. in order to get your civil engineer's license. And usually the earliest you can take the P exam is a couple of years after you graduate and start working in a full-time civil engineering job. So if we think about all that, going back to the main point I'm trying to make, from the beginning of when you start taking classes in college to when you get your civil engineer's license, be prepared to do a lot of math and learning of science and civil engineering subjects. So if you feel nauseous when you hear a lot of math and science, really think about if this is the career path you want to take. So let's say you're fine with all the math and science and the studying that it'll take to get your degree and license. That's great, but it's the first step. There are other things that will help determine if traffic engineer is a good fit for your career. One thing that I consider that's very important is having the right mentality and interests. Ideally, when I think about my career, i like it to be one where I would get up each day and actually would look forward to going to work. Realistically, it's my opinion that my career does not need to be my burning passion in life. What I do want to avoid though is having a career where I feel miserable and I don't feel like it's fulfilling or has any meaning. So here are three key things I believe every aspiring traffic engineer should consider when it comes to their mentality and interests. First and foremost, at the core of our job, our ultimate goal is to help people. More specifically, we help people so they can travel in what is often a very complex transportation system. We can help in many ways. Sometimes we try to make it safer, sometimes we try to make it more accessible, or sometimes we try to help them get to one place faster. Because of this, I believe traffic engineering will be more fulfilling to those who truly want to help people. But helping people is a bit too broad because really, Almost any job can be broken down to wanting to help people. So I like to combine the desire of wanting to help people with a deep fascination of wanting to understand transportation and also human nature. If you'd like to geek out on topics of transportation or you have an interest in how humans behave and think, these two components seem to always come up in traffic engineering. You know, I have to be interested in all the laws, the standards, the technologies, the infrastructure, that make our transportation system work. And I have to have the patience to research a topic and really take a deep dive to truly understand it. Also, whenever I'm investigating in a traffic problem, I always have to think about how people perceive it and what they're thinking. So it's my opinion that if you have these three, which is a desire to help people, a deep interest in transportation, and also a deep interest in understanding human nature 
and how people perceive things and what they're thinking, then you'll probably find traffic engineering very engaging and also fulfilling and enjoyable. The other thing I want to talk about is the expectation of perfection and wanting to make everyone happy. Traffic engineering is a people-centric profession. What I mean by that is everything we do is deeply connected to how human beings travel and live their lives. Every transportation vehicle is driven or experienced by people. In addition, so much of what we do is affected by changing laws and politics. Because of that, all the predictability and unpredictability of human nature is inherent in our jobs. So I learned that expecting everything to work perfectly or for everyone to be happy is a recipe for disappointment. And here are some examples of what I mean. A road can be designed very well, but one day someone decides to drink and is way over the legal limit and intoxicated. They decide to get behind the wheel and drive and they're going 40 miles per hour over the speed limit. They get into a bad crash and it ends up killing someone. Or in a different situation when you're timing a signal light and you allow more green time for one direction so more cars can pass through. But what you're also doing is you're affecting many of the other directions and they have to wait longer to get through the signal light. And sometimes we try to make the road more safer for bicycles but in doing so it will cause more delay and inconvenience for people driving cars. In a lot of these cases, there is no perfect solution that's going to make everyone happy. And there is no right answer. You will find a lot that there will always be someone that's unhappy about a decision or solution that you propose. It can be anyone from a resident to a commuter or even a politician. The list goes on and you're going to hear it one way or the other. You need to leave the feeling of needing to have the perfect solution or also needing to be right at the door. Having a thick skin helps too sometimes, so expect this when you're working in traffic engineering. It's not that you shouldn't shoot for perfection. We should all try our best with the tools and funding that we have. But when perfection can't occur, it's sometimes best to be able to move on and not get too down about it. I believe if you can handle this well and gracefully, not only will you not go crazy, but you'll even find this work enjoyable. So those are some of my tips of getting a good sense if traffic engineering would be a good career fit. Of course, there are a lot more things to consider, but these were some of the main ones that applied to me as I continue and progress through my career. I hope you found this video informative and thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.